Hello everyone, this is going to be a character controller tutorial for doing a 2D character controller in the overworld here. This, um, my intent is to have this be part of a series where we try to re-implement Final Fantasy VI's battle system in Godot 4. The goal being to have a tutorial that actually shows how to implement a little more complex battle system uh, as opposed to just the basics. And we want to have the full workflow before battle, during battle, and after battle. That's why I'm including something like a character controller here. So to start off, we're going to add a character body 2D right here. I'm going to call that lock. And before we get into the controller itself too much, um, I want to touch on the sprites. So when you're creating a sprite sheet like this, you can find these sprites anywhere online these days. Uh, but to make sure it actually works as a sprite sheet, obviously you need to line up everything both horizontally and vertically. So if you were making this sheet yourself, um, this is just a rectangle select up here. In a sprite, when you select a sprite, you can then move that selection so you could line them up like this. So, you know, you see like, okay, this is right on where you should be. You want to go directly from there. And same thing horizontally, make sure that they line up. That, that way, if you use these as frames of animation, they're not going to be like moving all over the place like so. So I'll just undo that. But once you have that and you have all the frames that you need and you've got the rest of the background transparent, then you're ready to put that into Godot. So I have that down here, 4x again, just because I scaled it up. We're going to add a sprite 2D, and that's going to be what we use for the sprite sheet. So you see it, it'll put it as your origin point by default. So when you go here to animation, under here you have horizontal frames and vertical frames. That's just how many images you have each direction. So we put that to 7, and this is 15. So as long as you've got everything sized correctly and you've got the correct number that you divided that image into, then you're going to, um, you're just going to see a single image, which will be your first one in that sprite sheet right here. So you'll see here Godot's complaining there's no collision shape. So in order to interact, obviously we need a collision shape. We'll add that, collision shape 2D. And right away it's telling you, if I hover over here, it must be provided an actual shape. So that, that's because you can pick any of these collision shapes. In this case, a rectangle is going to do us just fine. Rectangle shape 2D. And you see it starts off here just 20 by 20. You can drag it right here. And I believe similar to Unity, if you hold alternate, it'll scale the other side proportionally. And this is a judgment call, you know, like where would you actually allow clipping or whatever. So right now it would be able to interact with the environment if, if I were bothered with colliders on the map or anything, which I have not. So now for the animation piece, we need to add an animation player and tree. Animation player is where you're going to actually create the animations. And the tree is essentially how you would interact with those animations. I'll get into that. So here, and so the animation tree already doesn't like me. So you, can, you don't have to do it in this order right away, but I'm just going to go ahead and drag that animation player into here. So here, it's saying no root animation node. That's another one you can implement a couple of different ways. So what I'm going to use is Godot's blend space 2D ability, and I'll show, show what that is. But I'm going to actually have one blend space for idle and one blend space for walking. The way I've been implementing that is just to add a state machine. And we'll show how that works again as we get into this. So at this point though we need to create the animations. So to create one all you have to do is click on this new and we're just going to call it clock idle down and we need to add a track. I'm going to go to property Go to the Sprite 2D, and then select Frame. All right, so now that we have this track, we can add any of those frames that we uh, had up there to that track. One thing you want to make sure of over here is that this is on discrete. For sprite animation, of course, we don't want it trying to blend things together on us. So if that's not already on discrete, make sure it is. If I go down here and I can right-click and insert key, value 0. So that value is just... Think of the order of these sprites. That's what that means. So if I were to change that, you'll see them change down here. 
but idle down is just going to be that first one that works out nicely. This will tell you how long that frame is going to last, but that's not going to matter because it's just one frame in this particular case. If you had an idle animation where you know bouncing up and down or whatever, then you'd have to play with that. But I'm going to show that when we do uh, one of the other animations like the walk. So we're going to continue. So I'm going to go up here to animation, new. I'm going to do walk, idle left. Same thing, add the track frame. Oops, and insert the key. Went a little off to the side there. And this one, I've done it before, so I can tell you it's 14, just to save us some time for the tutorial. But you'll see he's facing left there. I'm going to do the same for the right and up uh, animations. Okay, so the idols are out of the way. Like I said, all, only one frame. Now we're going to go to the walk animations. So we'll do walk down. Same thing, add the frame on the sprite. So what we want here is I'm trying to get it as close as possible to the Super Nintendo. So what that turned out to be for me is 0.8 and then just uh, each of these frames is going to be 0.2. And you can use control and the mouse wheel to scroll this in or out, and this will make it a little more appropriate so we can hit the exact spot that we want. So here we're going to go right back to 0, 0.4, and 0.6. And then we're going to select this over here to repeat the animation, and then let's try it out. And so there we see him. Let's hide this collision shape. Now, once you set the collision shape, you can just set it to invisible over here. So now we've got a walking down animation. So I'll go ahead and create the other animations for walking uh, left, right, and up now, but I'll speed that up because it's going to be the same exact process, so not to bore everybody. So with that out of the way, now we can just bring him over here on the grass so it's a little easier to see. If you move him, make sure you select the parent object here so you don't uh, drag elements of him out of position. There we go. So now we're going to take a look at this animation tree. So every state machine is going to have the start and the end. What we're going to do is add a blend space 2D. I'm going to call this one idle blend space 2D. And we're going to do that again. And another one for the walk. So those need to be able to transition between each other. So you go right here, connect nodes, press this button here. And we are going to have it on immediate because, again, this is sprite animation. You don't want to have it try and blend things together or it will be messy. So just make sure that's selected. And then, oops, so one kind of bummer is it makes me want to go back to selection and select this one. Same thing, and then have it connect back. And that will enable them to transition between each other. On this little button here, you just go in this to edit the blend space 2D. So what this blend space is going to do is it's going to give us a convenient way to handle input, whereas you're pressing a direction on the control pad and you're rolling over to a diagonal, you don't have one direction obviously superseding another because that can be a pain. Similarly to the animations themselves on the blend, we're going to make sure this is um, discrete because we're not going to have it try and transition between the animations. Each frame is going to be either one or the other. And then we go over to here and create points and then we will add an animation so this is going to be like when such and such direction is indicated this is going to be the animation that plays so we're going to press idle down for right here so the reason this is idle down even though it's kind of up here is because these are the y values so this is po a positive y value and an age-old convention probably back to drawing of scan lines is that the coordinate system when you're dealing with video games and 
uh, displays tends to start here as 0, 0, so a positive y value is actually going down. So that's why that's kind of flipped that vertically in your mind is the easiest way to think of that. So this is really like if they're pressing down with a positive y value there. So here it's like if they're pressing up, we're going to again make sure you're on create points uh, here, add animation, and then we're going to go idle up. And you can see didn't quite go where I wanted. You can select over here if you need to move a point. But now I'm going to go over here and we're going to do idle left here and idle right over here. Okay, so if you want to test this out, uh, if you go over here and set the blending position, it'll indicate or let's see. Sorry, you have to also check this to activate that. And if it didn't already, you might have to hit play here before it actually does anything. So let's try that again. There we go. So here you can see like wherever you are, it finds the appropriate direction to be facing. And again, this is this is like pressing up. This is like pressing down because of that Y position flip. So just kind of keep that in your mind. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the walk space. We're going to create a point. So again, this is like pressing down. So pressing down, we want walk down. And here, like pressing up, we want walk up. And same thing for left and right. OK, so on further investigation here, this must be something that was added in since I did this in the Godot 4 alphas. The reason these things are flashing like mad is so this transition mode right here is set to auto by default. What we want is enabled. And on this one as well, no doubt, because we're going to control that switch in code. So we're going to enable the transition, but we're not going to have it <laughs> trying to do it for us. So let's try this again. And there we go. Now I need to explain the switch between the idle and walk blend spaces in code. I just want to make sure that worked first. So how we do that is right down here. In this section I did add to the default controller. So what we do here is get the animation tree, meaning you know this animation tree. So this bit of code here, this is what's actually accomplishing that. We get the animation tree that's attached to the node and the playback is just one of the parameters of the state machine. So that's going to come into play down here, like the uh, travel you'll see that's just the play mode right here, the method. So here we're saying if normalized direction, which we get from the input up here, this is part of Godot's template. Uh, as long, if that turns out to be uh, zero, then, which means we're not pressing any direction, then we just hit playback travel and then whatever you named that blend space 2D here. So otherwise, if we are pressing some direction, we're gonna set the normalized direction for that blend position and this is this kind of directory looking structure is simply how Godot handles that parameters the blend space that you created and the blend position is the parameter uh, we're going to set that to the normalized direction so what that means is you're setting this is the blend space you're going to set the normalized direction uh, here that we were messing with before to whatever the result of that input from the controller is. That's what's happening right here. So the reason we're setting that on the both the idle space and the walk space is because when they stop pressing a direction this is going to make them face in the correct idle direction or play the correct idle animation to be more accurate. And similar to up here, this is telling it to actually play back the animation based on that blend position that we set right here. And this velocity and the move and slide, that's also part of the template. This is just Godot's method to handle the actual movement. But that about covers it. Let's just make sure he walks okay. It's actually getting a little bit of a blip. Okay, that's not good. Let's see what's up here. Looks okay. Ah, follow my own advice. So here, uh, like I said, make sure this blend is set to discrete. Otherwise, you can get stuff like that happening. Let's try this one more time. Mm -hmm. 
There we go. All right, no nonsense. Great. Okay, so there we have it, a basic character controller. Uh, next time I'm going to look into random encounters for battle so we can transition to another scene.